Hi there, welcome to 42 Pursuit, I'm Gavin. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about cheap LED lighting fixtures such as these. Now, I got these from Amazon through a company called Barina. I got 20 of them a little over a year ago, and since then, 14 have failed, and the other six are clearly on their way out. In this video, we're gonna tear into one of the failed ones, see why it failed, see if it's fixable, and also keep an eye out for things to watch out for with cheap LED lighting fixtures. If that's something you're interested in, stick around. Quick side note, if you found this video because you have failed light fixtures that you purchased from Barina in the last three years, go ahead and get them warrantied. Spoiler alert, fixing them really isn't a viable option. Go ahead and contact them through their contact email, and I'll have a link to that in the description below. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Let's take a closer look at these strips, shall we? Looks like just one screw on each end cap. Now this is a, looks like a 120 volt pass-through, so these can be daisy chained together from this three pin connector. We don't need this one, so we'll clip it. And then we can see power must come in one of these strips and then loop back around to the other strip. So in order to pull these out, we'll have to clip these as well. Now this side should have the power supply inside somewhere. That will convert the 120 volt AC line to some DC voltage to power the LEDs. Looks like there's some hot glue in the end there. Let's see if we can sort of leverage that out. Well, when in doubt with adhesive, grab the heat gun. There we go. So that's about what I expected. We've got a plastic shield around the power supply so that the mains voltage doesn't ever touch the aluminum of the case. So we'll get into that and see what's inside. Now here we can see what's going on a little bit more clearly. We've got our input power, 120 volt line AC going to this connector, which feeds power to this side of the board. We've got some wires that go to this connector on the other side of the fixture that we cut off to supply power to other fixtures down line. Then we've got some input filtering, I think, for these couple devices. And then these ICs are where things start happening. They are bridge rectifiers. Now a bridge rectifier is a nifty little device that takes an input sine wave and flips the negative component to a positive sine wave so you get just a bunch of positive bumps. Now this sort of red capacitor after that takes those bumps and smooths them out to create more of a DC output. Now if you notice, we have sort of two identical circuits here, starting with this red component the capacitor and going to this blue electrolytic capacitor. And then again, we've got the same components there. Now I think each one of these bridge rectifiers go to each circuit. Now these guys are rated at 0.8 amps, so you double it by adding two of them, and then you do two downstream circuits from that. Now this next device, it is a buck LED driver. So it takes the DC component on this and then drives the LEDs with that, but reduces the voltage according to whatever you want with the resistors and capacitors sort of setting those values. Now, one other thing to look at is these electrolytic capacitors because they sometimes fail in devices. The way you can kind of tell that most of the time is the end will start bulging out. Now, both of these for this first circuit and the second circuit seem fine. So I don't think that those are causing this entire fixture to fail. Everything else looks pretty good on that. These are mostly through-hole components with only a few of them being surface mount components. So pretty cheap board. It's a two layer board, nothing fancy, but it's about what we expect for a, a budget sort of AC to DC LED power supply like this. Now let's very carefully put some line AC power on this and measure the DC output so we have a better idea of what we're dealing with. It looks like we're around 98 volts DC on the output. Since everything there seems okay, let's take a look at the LED strip. Now the first thing I notice here is this is only a one layer board, meaning there's only copper on one side of this board. They did that to cut costs because adding an extra layer of copper increases the price of a circuit board like this, but I think it would have been a valuable thing to do because of heat dissipation. This backside is against the aluminum extrusion of the housing, and that would help the heat dissipate away from the LEDs. LEDs don't like to get hot, so power dissipation is really good if you want a long life. I understand why they did it, but I don't like it. Fortunately for us, we can see from the bottom how they routed the LEDs here. We're actually looking through the board and seeing the shape of the copper on the top surface. Now, if you look closely, there's sort of a, a repeating pattern here. We've got sort of a split here, and a split here, and a split here. Looking more closely, there's what seems to be 10 LEDs in parallel, every pattern. And then if you count the patterns up, there's 12 over the length of the whole strip. Now I'm quite sure that this is our problem. 
If we have 10 LEDs in parallel, all being supplied with the same voltage and current with no resistance, if one of these LEDs has even a slightly different forward voltage, it starts hogging the majority of the current. It heats up, and if it can't dissipate that heat, it blows up. Then you have one less LED out of what should be 10, you have nine, so you have more current than should be supplied to nine going through, and then it just is this cascading effect. Now, because these have lasted almost a year before they started failing, you can tell that these LEDs were binned which that means when they're manufactured, the forward voltage of the LEDs are measured and they're put in similar, essentially buckets or bins of similar forward voltage LEDs. But if you don't have an adequately cooled system, you don't have good quality control on the LEDs, and just with time, LEDs with very slight differences in forward voltage will start hogging more of the current and you get this cascading failure. Once one pops, the next one's gonna pop a lot faster and so forth. Once these all die, then you've essentially got a short in the system and you're not getting any power to any of the other 12 LEDs in the strip, much less there's two strips, so the 24 sets of 10 LEDs. So your entire fixture fails. Now this is something you really wanna watch out for with cheap LED strips. If you have a bunch of LEDs and you have no resistors on the printed circuit board, they probably skimped so that they could save their fractions of a penny with every resistor. And you're gonna have the same problem where one parallel LED is gonna hog most of the current. Eventually at some point it's gonna blow up and then there's gonna be more current and then the next one's gonna blow up and the next one. And then soon you're gonna have a failure, which is exactly what we're seeing in this. We'll look into it a little bit further, but I have a high confidence that this is the issue with these LED strips. Now, before we test our hypothesis on why these are failing, we're gonna take a working strip and get the voltage and current off of that just so we have working condition values. So for voltage, it looks like we're around 75 volts. And it looks like we're pulling just about half an amp. Now doing some quick math, 75 volts times half an amp is 37.5 watts. Now these are supposed to be 40 watt fixtures, so we're in the ballpark of what we expect. Now let's put this back to the side and go back to our strip from one of the bad lights. Now we're gonna set up our benchtop power supply using the values that we measured on the good fixture. Now the good fixture was 75 volts into two strips, and those two strips had 24 banks of 10 LEDs. So 75 divided by 24 is 3.125. Let's do 3.2. And then for current, we were at 500 milliamps divided by 10 LEDs per section is 50 milliamps per LED, but let's drop that down to 20 milliamps so we don't blind ourselves. Go to output. Now I've got the output of the power supply connected to these probe tips. <laughs> this is not recommended. Don't ever, ever, ever do this. I'm just gonna do this once, but if you won't tell, I won't tell. So we're gonna apply a voltage across these LEDs and it should light up banks of 10 at a time. So that one has two LEDs out, but the whole bank of 10 is working. This one, uh, I think these 10 might be our dead ones. You can see some of these are a little bit burnt looking at the center. There's a definite black pit on that one. So let's go down to this guy. Yep, so those 10 are working. Those 10 are working. Most of those 10 are working. All of those 10, all of those 10, all of those 10. A couple dead on that one, one dead on that one, all good on that one, and just one dead on that set of 10. So it looks like this strip did exactly what we were expecting from here to here. So this confirms what we were thinking, having 10 LEDs in parallel, when one goes out, more current to the nine, and then a cascading failure until they all fail. You can see some of the other groups of 10 had a couple LEDs that had started to fail, but not any of that full group. So now that this is shorted, this entire, you know, two of these per fixture, it shorts out both this one and the one that loops back to the power supply. So these 10 LEDs burning out break the whole fixture. So with the right tools, you could replace these LEDs if you could find the same package and, and specs. But even then, that wouldn't do you any good because as we saw in the other groups of 10 when we were testing these, some of them had one or two LEDs out. And once you get to that point, it only takes probably one or two more until there's so much current per group of 10 LEDs. It's half an amp for 10. So we're already at 50 milliamps per LED. 50 milliamps is quite a lot without the cooling on the backside, having a two layer board. So quite a few things just going against us. So yeah, replacing LEDs, it's not gonna be worth it. The only reasonable thing really in this scenario is hope that you're under warranty still. These ones should have a three year warranty according to the manufacturer and get a replacement or get your money back. I do not recommend these strips and hopefully this video has explained why. 
Well, I think that about covers it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about LED fixtures, things to look for and things to look out for. And as always, keep pursuing life, the universe, and everything. Until next time, when we dive into something probably completely different, take care.